Hello, 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 good afternoon, good morning, good evening, whatever other goods there are. It is episode number 285 of This Week in WordPress, and I am joined, as you can see, by a whole panel of fabulous people. Uh, we'll start off with my co-host, Dan, at, oh, where is it? Uh, roughly there, <laughs> in the corner. Dan and Con. How are you doing, Michelle? I am good. How are you? Yeah, really, really good. Um, Michelle has a wonderful bio, uh, and it goes like this. Michelle Frechette is the Director of Community Engagement for Stella WP at Liquid Web. In addition to her word work at Stella WP, Michelle is the podcast barista at WP Coffee Talk, co-founder of Underrepresented in Tech, creator of WP Speakers, creator of WP Career Pages, contributor at Post Status, co-host of the WP Motivate podcast, co-host, I'm breathing now, co-host of the Audacity Marketing podcast, host of WP Constellations podcast. You do more podcasts than I do. Uh, I author, know. Yeah, <laughs> author and frequent organizer and speaker at WordPress events. We'll have a lot to say about them later. She lives in Rochester, or outside, I should say, of Rochester, New York, where she is an avid nature photographer. And the final URL, if you want to learn more about Michelle, is meetmichelle.online. Thank you so much for coming back yet again as our co-host to today. Here. Yeah, thank you. Also, a uh, first time appearance by now, forgive me, I'm going to try to get this right, because I know that your name is not pronounced in the way that I probably would have said it first off. Uh, Carlin Devru. Perfect. Yes, <laughs> get in, uh, just because you wrote it out phonetically for me. But uh, there's Carlin, Carlin Devru. Um, he's been work as part of the WordPress community since it was forked from B2 Cafe Log, so right at the start. Good grief, that's pretty I'm, amazing. Yeah, I'm very yeah. old. Thank you for bringing that up. <laughs> 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 oh, I'm sorry. Uh, he has built multiple startups and products on WordPress. Carlin is currently the senior product manager at NerdPress, N E R D P R E S S. Go Google it. Working on Hubbub, a social sharing plugin for WordPress. Hubbub makes it easy for website visitors to share blog posts to their favorite social network, including X or Twitter, uh, Facebook, Pinterest, and just last week, Threads Ooh, and more. Hubbub Pro adds many additional networking features, uh, gives publishers powerful Pinterest customizations, and sharing stats to give them insight into what is being shared from their website. You can find out more, morehubbub.com, morehubbub.com. I said the word more twice. Um, you can also find Carlin on his personal website, cdevru, and also on Mastodon. Well, it's lovely to have you. I appreciate you. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah, yeah, you're welcome. Um, and the, finally, Mark. Mark, second time, I believe, for Mark coming on the That's show. Right. How are you doing, Mark? Yeah, I'm doing great. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's lovely thanks to for, have you. Thanks back. for having me a second time. <laughs> yeah, you're very, very welcome. Well, Mark has been involved with the WordPress community for over 13 years. For 10 of those years, he was a member of the team that made up ServerPress. He's now the marketing lead for Main WP, which is an easy to use privacy focused WordPress management dashboard, as well as Site District, a collaborative managed WordPress host. So there we go. There's all the introductions. You now know our panel for today. We're going to talk a lot about WordPress, as we always do. Before then, a few bits of little housekeeping. Um, in order to make use of this live, if you're joining us live, we obviously repurpose this and send it out as a podcast and things like that. But if you're joining us live, feel free to comment. We love that. It makes this show a large number better. Let's say a million times better, <laughs> something like that. Uh, the easiest place to go is this page, wpbuilds.com forward slash live. Stop what you're doing now. Put that coffee down and go to that page and then share it. You know, copy and paste the uh, URL into all the social that platforms. Page isn't working right now, Nathan. It's oh, got you an are old, kidding. Okay, it's don't got go an to old that page. URL in there. Go to, go to really? YouTube. Pick, pick your coffee back yeah. up. And, it's got uh, some back off. <laughs> Right. It's I'm got just, Sabrina no, on it. I've got to. I've got to check that. Right, WP Builds. <laughs> Is WPBuilds.com working? Yeah. Well, that's fun, slash, isn't it? But the live page is working. Live. It's It's got an old. It's got an old URL on there. Oh, uh, okay. I'll tell you what. It's when linking one of to you, a past episode. Yeah. Thank you. When one of you mm -hmm. starts talking, I'll go and amend that because something's got balked somewhere, and uh, it's. I know yeah. what it'll be, and it's an easy fix. It's Monday. I, yeah, I need to go and fix it. <laughs> anyway, go there. Uh, join in the comments. That would be really nice. Alternatively, head over to YouTube, and you can join us there. If you're on Facebook uh, or Twitter, Facebook in particular, go to wave.video forward slash lives forward slash Facebook. 
Okay, I will fix that page in just a moment so that it's working and appreciate anybody who has pointed that out. First of all, let's say some hellos. Hello, Emmanuel. Very nice to have you with us. Really enjoying the Monday morning, as is Courtney. Happy Monday. Mike is... Hello, everyone. Afternoon, everyone. Hope that you're all okay. Igor joining us with a little hand wave. Marcus Burnett said, good morning, pressers. Indeed, indeed. And Peter Ingersoll, as he always does from Connecticut, gives us the weather. <laughs> it's become a tradition. It's a thing. It's tw it's my ah oh, what? It's minus one degree centigrade. No, oh do, my. do they map? That seems wrong. Minus no, that is one, that map. is that is definitely incorrect. I'm not too far from Peter, and it's it's not. Uh, it's I not think it might be. <laughs> would that be thirty? I reckon he's missed a three. Yeah, we we yeah. usually get similar to y'all, and it's thirty three here in Rochester. So okay, okay. Anyway, it's a it's a sensible number of degrees centigrade, and a crazy <laughs> indecipherable number of degrees. Fahrenheit. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit bonkers. Um, and very nice to see you, Peter. Thank you. Um, I might get to see Mark in per person later this week. Oh, Mark, tell us more. Do you even know why um, you might? <laughs> unfortunately, unless, Courtney, unless you're going to come visit me, uh, <laughs> I, I think what she's probably talking about is WordCamp Phoenix. And unfortunately, I have to skip it this week oh. or this year because I have uh, some uh, family uh, things going on. Um, so my dad is turning 84 years old this year and, uh, for the first time in a while, he's going to have all four of his kids in one place. So, um, oh, nice. that, that kind of oh. took, yeah, I'm really excited. And man, if I get to be him when I grow up, I'll be like happy. So yeah, oh. he's, he's 84 and they just got back from Pismo beach and they're on their way to Italy this summer. And it's like, they, they just don't stop. So, uh, yeah, yeah. I'll tell you I, what, uh, you should definitely, you know, t when this gets published, s cut out that snippet of what you just said and send it to your dad and make him cry tears of joy. Well, <laughs> I, I don't know. He hears me say that all the time. It oh, okay. Just be, yeah, that's just <laughs> Mark being Mark again. <laughs> yeah, so, oh, okay. you know, yeah. Oh. I, okay. I, I don't do that in every aspect of my life, but the one thing that I, I will say is I've always been very good about making sure my dad knows how much he means to me. So That's nice. Um, yeah. That is yeah. nice. I need to do that with more people. Yeah. <laughs> I should say, just to clear up the whole YouTube thing, the video thing, a quick way to get to the video would just be to go to um, youtube.com forward slash WP Builds. That's another alternative. And I'll, I'll get it fixed. I'll just do it while somebody's having their first little chat. Okay, here we go. Uh, this is our website, wpbuilds.com. If you like what we do and you want to subscribe, put your email address in there. You can find out all the different bits and pieces that we're doing. If you head over here, which is wpbuilds.com forward slash schedule, you can see that this week, here we are, we're here. We don't have any webinars organized this week, but we do have our Speed It Up show. Uh, on Thursday with Sabrina Zidane. In fact, you could basically copy and paste that into every Thursday because that's the plan that we've got. We do have a uh, webinar coming up on the 28th called From Themes to Blocks with Tammy Lister. Uh, if you don't know much about Tammy, she was one of the one of the architects of the early stages of Gutenberg, so that'll be kind of interesting. And let's get into some WordPress stuff. Okay, first stop. WordPress 6.4.3, if you haven't got your sites on auto update, firstly, why not? That's very naughty. Um, and if you have, this will probably have, you've probably got a deluge of email just the other day saying your site has been updated. And then another one which said exactly the same thing, but it has. And it was a security um, five bug fixes in core, 16 bug fixes for the block editor. I actually didn't have a lot to say about this just to make sure that your sites were updated, but it turns out that Carlin has in has in fact got some things to add to this. So can I just drop you right into it, Carlin, and say, off sure, yeah, go, what was going on there? Yeah, um, there was a fix that uh, or a security update to WordPress in this build that could cause some havoc with those uploading uploading uh, zip files to their WordPress admin. So um, zip files that were created using uh, Macintosh, like if you take a folder on the Mac and you just right click and hit compress, it creates a zip file for you. That process creates a zip file that is no longer accepted by WordPress after this build. And so a lot of plugin developers, that's how they compress their builds for their plugins, especially those that are distributing them outside of the plugin directory, because the plugin directory does that on its own. You don't have to 
supply a zip file. It does it on its own, or you can update your plugins through your WordPress dashboard and all that was working just fine. But uh, the underlying issue is any website that is, or any WordPress installation that's running on a server that does not have libzip updated to a certain version number would then cause you to get an error message back when you tried to upload one of these zips. Um, and so there's a nice track uh, uh, ticket that describes not only the issues, but some of the workarounds that they have already uh, come up with. So if you run into this issue, if you're listening to this now and you had this issue, you tried to update a plugin, you got an error message after this update, or you're trying to install a new plugin that you downloaded or a theme, I'm sorry, not, not just plugins, that you downloaded from a website and you're getting this error, it's pretty easy to fix. Uh, if you go to the track ticket, there's several ways to do it. Um, and also Mac users that use Safari, because Safari automatically un uncompresses zip files when you download them by default, it creates a folder on your computer. So then people would then right click on it, compress it again because they need to, creating their own bad zip file essentially. So it, it's a fairly broad issue. Um, it already has a patch in the works. Um, it's already in testing. I think there's a, a pull request for it already. Um, but unfortunately, those of us like myself that develop premium plugins and distribute them through zip files, uh, we're, we're very much impacted by this. But uh, fortunately, there's already a fix in the works. Did any of you guys hit that issue? No, I, I confess I didn't, but I did see some of the, I forgot um, about that aspect of it, but it, the, the press that I saw, it was all bound to zipping on Mac OS. Was it a, was it a particular issue with Mac OS or was it simply that you had to be, op your Mac OS version possibly didn't have the correct, um, what was it? Lib. Libzip. No, so Lib -zip. it, it, it is Mac related in the sense that a Mac can create a bad zip file. But people were creating bad zip files on Windows, on Ubuntu. So if you read the track, you'll see there's a lot of people coming up with a lot of uh, different operating system distributions that could create the bad zip files also. So it wasn't necessarily a Mac issue. I think it was mainly looked at as a Mac issue early on when it was detected because when people were downloading the zip files through Safari, and then they had to create their own zips. They're the ones that were the first people to kind of maybe see this issue that happened. Got so it. it kind of got linked to being a Mac problem, but it is most definitely more so an issue with the libzip version on the server. Uh, so if you were up to date on that, then you never saw this issue, even if you had a bad uh, zip file. So the workaround for this, if you're interested, is um, hopefully the plugin author or the theme author already created a new zip file that you can download from their website. That's what we did at Hubbub is we created new zip files that were not, would not give anybody an issue. Um, so you can just download those again and hopefully you won't have the issue. But if you're on a Mac and you get a zip file and you're using Safari and it creates a directory for you, you need to rezip that. There's a command line, uh, a tool that you can use to zip the file and it will work just great. I, you're probably not too happy to have to use the command line, but in that track, there's a, a track ticket. There's a nice thing you can copy and paste and create a zip file for yourself. So if you do run into that issue, but hopefully this will be patched soon. I don't know if the, if they'll wait until 6.4 point, like, I don't know if they'll do a 6.4.4. That's kind of what all of the plugin Authors are hoping that they do because it created a lot of support uh, issues, as you might imagine. Um, or if they'll wait to the end of March until another release is done. Oh, wow. Okay. Kind of interesting that that one got got through. Actually, um, mm -hmm. was there any was there any sort of blowback that you saw in the community around that? The fact that it didn't get picked up, or no? I I mean I didn't. There was there was a lot of going back and forth in the track ticket about whether or not this was a big issue or not. Yeah. Um, you know, the scope of an issue is very difficult to kind of determine early on. And so I don't blame anybody for thinking that it was a small issue, obviously, because it's my day job to create 
plugins, it obviously feels like a big deal to me, whereas to someone else, maybe it wouldn't. Um, but really, it comes down to the end user experience, right? If somebody's using WordPress that is does not understand all of the underlying issues, um, we all know that we all are standing on the shoulders of many, many, many different packages and operating system versions and WordPress versions and all obviously the, the stack that you host your website on. There's a lot of things that could go wrong in there, but ultimately it looks like WordPress is broken to an end user that doesn't understand the mm -hmm. underlying technology, you know, or that the plugin author gave you a bad file, which is unfortunate. You wouldn't want to give your customer a, uh, something that is broken. So um, I didn't see any blowback as to why this didn't get caught in testing. Obviously, someone like myself should have maybe caught something like that in if I had a beta of 6.4.3, then I should have caught those things. I personally, with my test environments, don't have that issue because my libzip is up to date. So um, it, it is it's, uh, you know, it's unfortunate that it got through, but I don't think anybody blamed anybody for that. Yeah, it's interesting that point that you made about being a plugin author because that would be the first line of that would be the way you'd go for support, really. I guess if yes. you just updated a plugin, especially if you did it manually, and all of a sudden this happened, right. the assumption I think my assumption actually, to be fair, would be well, it must be the, mm -hmm. the patch, you know, the plugin that I've just updated. So I'd be off to their support. But okay, oh, that's really interesting and a very deep dive into that. Thank you so much. Let's. Mm -hmm. uh, Let's hope that that one doesn't happen again. Mark or Michelle, do you have anything you want to add to that little thing? Way back when I first started working at Give, I had a customer who was complaining that she could not upload and open any of the the files for um, you know for the add-ons for Give, and she was in I think in South Africa, and so we set up a time to get on a Zoom together, and I said, "Walk me through what you're doing," and her her um, settings for uh, for um, Apple for her iOS was to automatically open any zipped files. And that was the mm -hmm. first time I'd seen that. Cause I was like, how is it not working? And I watched and I was like, Oh, we need to fix how you're downloading your files. And so mm -hmm. it sounds very similar to that. And I had never, I didn't even know that was an issue before that. So yeah, it definitely makes life a little bit harder if you're unzipping your files before you're trying to do anything with them. Yeah. 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 Good point. Uh, Mark, anything or should we press on? No, I, I think we're very fortunate to have Colin on to no be able to kidding. get into that so deeply because mm -hmm. I I haven't I haven't done anything with WordPress in the last week and or or so and this is really good to know about because I would have been banging my head against the wall probably over it. So. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, very nice to bring that to light. I appreciate that, Colin. That's absolutely amazing. By the way, if you head over to wpbuilds.com forward slash live, it's now working. Um, it's kind of a weird, it, but not what I expected, actually. It was something else I had to troubleshoot quickly. So uh, I had one ear on Carlin and one ear on, on that. I, I, I think we... <laughs> one ear is on me is more than yeah, yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> that's, uh, that's That was enough on this occasion to get us through. Okay, anyway, there we go. 6.4.3 with a very nice in-depth analysis of what went wrong in one particular case. Um, I don't know if there's anything really to say too much about this, but this is just to say that there's a piece appeared on make.wordpress.org uh, by Dave Smith on the 19th of January, so it's not particularly new. Um, important milestones for 6.5, and it really just outlines the fact that beta 1, as we say in the UK, uh, is coming around on the 13th of February, so really soon. Kind of connected to that. Um, here's uh, another article. This was just the other day. This is Mary Baum, and this is the release schedule for uh, 6.5. And I won't labor the point, but if you go to the URL, I'll put it in the show notes. It's called Release 6.5. Uh, sorry, 6.5 release party schedule and hosts. You'll be able to see that, uh, yeah, 13th of February, beta one, 20, uh, beta two, a week after that, and then so on and so on, a week, a week, a week, a week, until finally the dry run for 6.5 will be March the 25th with a hopeful 
possible general release on March the 26th, if nothing goes wrong. On March. That's the, the date that I hope we don't have to wait for for the patch that I just talked about. <laughs> I, hope, <laughs> yeah. I, I hope we don't have to wait until then. Yeah, uh, but uh, yeah, fingers crossed. Uh, but yeah, there you go. So that's uh, that. They're the dates to put into your diary. And, you know, if you're a if you're an avid follower of the project and working on core and all of that, all of these things matter. But maybe if you're just an end user, probably the only only the one at the end is of significance to you. But there we go. I've raised it anyway. Okay, so this is this is absolutely fascinating. And we mentioned this on a previous episode, but I, I wanted to highlight it again. A because we've got a different panel, and B because I've actually produced the piece of content that it was related to. So um, Michelle. Uh, the co-host of the This Week in WordPress show. I'm just going to keep saying it, Michelle. Um, she she put me in touch with somebody called Mike or Terry, and uh, we had a really interesting chat about a plugin that he and a growing team of community members are getting involved in, and it's called some. It's called GatherPress. Now, if you have attended a WordPress meetup or or any event that probably wasn't a Word Camp. Um, then you've probably come across something called meetup.com. It's a SaaS platform. And for historical reasons, which I don't really know, it has become the de facto way of, of organizing and communicating with people about your events. So, you know, for example, Word, uh, the WordPress London meetup, which is restarting. Thank you, Dan, maybe, and Paul Smart. Um, the, the event system that you're going to go through is meetup.com. However, Mike had this intuition that wouldn't it be nice, given that we've got a CMS, wouldn't it be nice to take this functionality into a plugin? And so in 2019, and then th through the years of the pandemic, Mike uh, started working on this and, and has now got to the point where he thinks it's pretty much capable of doing the job that Meetup would do. And uh, so he's, he's put it out there. He's put it out there for public consumption. There's a GitHub repo. Actually, everything's linked to in the show notes. This is on the, the WP Tavern website. I put the podcast there. And uh, you can find the GatherPress uh, Slack group. You can find the, the Twitter channel. You can find all of the different pieces, the plugin website, the GitHub repository. They're all in the show notes. But he's really keen to take this forward and to go into a stage where it's being battle tested out in the wild with real events and seeing what feature set is needed. But I just thought this was kind of interesting. Um, it was recently acquired meetup.com by a company which governs a bunch of SaaS products. And so maybe there's a bit of sweet timing here in that, you know, questions often get asked, don't they, when there's an acquisition, how will that keep going? And also, according to Mike's calculations, the WordPress community uh, spend close to a quarter of a million dollars a year uh, on accounts for meetup. I think it was $234,000 a year, if his math was correct. And he thought maybe that could be, you know, used in some other vein. So whether you've got a grudge against meetup.com or not, <laughs> I'm going to open it up to the panel. Just go for it. What do you think? Good idea? Got legs? No way? Who knows? My biggest concern with it when I, so Mike reached out to me a long time ago to see if I'd be willing to look at it and give some feedback and some ideas. And my biggest concern with it was how many people are discovering their local WordPress meetups specifically through meetup.com. So I ran a very unscientific poll on <laughs> my meetup group and asked them, how did you discover this group? And of the people who answered, less than 20, so again, not scientific, but still gives you some anecdotal information, um, I think only one out of 20 had discovered the group through meetup.com. Everybody else had discovered it either through the Facebook group or they had um, been invited from another per through another person. And that was the primary way is somebody told me about it. Several people had seen it on their um, dashboard. So you will see local events show up on your WordPress dashboard and several people had found it that way. So as long as we're able to continue to put like the local meetups on the dashboard, regardless of whether they're part of meetup.com or not. And I suspect that events.wordpress.org can somehow feed into there, right? For your local, I'm not sure how that works. I'm not a developer, but I think that this should be a really good alternative and can save groups a lot of money. So every official 
WordPress meetup that's on meetup.com is paid for by meetup.com. There are a lot of unofficial ones um, in that they are not officially sanctioned and paid for by meetup.org. Not that they are not talking about WordPress. <laughs> so yeah. um, when I say official, that's what I mean. Yeah. And there are a lot more that aren't that are being paid for by people like you and me who have started their meetup and want to have control over the entire thing as opposed to co-opt it with um, with WordPress.org. So this would be a way for you to still have a lot of um, autonomy over your group, but save WordPress.org a lot of money and be able to put it right on your own websites. Like WPRochester.com, for example, is our local um, website for our meetup. And that's you know, right now everything's going on meetup.com and then I'm sharing it other places. But if it was right on the website, that would be a lot easier to do. Mike, um, in the podcast, he, he was mentioning that he carried out some other anecdotal uh, survey. I, I, actually, I don't know if he said that, but he said that in his experience, he was able to show that the dashboard widget has become the thing. Uh, for the meetup which he attends and organizes, it, it really was coming from the dashboard widget. And um, yeah, when I go to my meetup account, I only visit it to RSVP to something I've seen somewhere else, which is typically the dashboard widget or on social media. I go to meetup.com, click the black RS, you know, I don't know what the wording is, but, you know, I want to go yeah. to this event button and then I log out mm -hmm. and I'm gone. Um, and so it's not really doing any of that. Maybe I've switched off notifications. Maybe I should be getting email. But the dashboard widget would be the way to do it. And I think Mike's intuition around this project is that w if it got some legs and it got some buy-in from the community, it could become an official project at a, I don't know, meetup.wordpress.org domain name, a multi-site network set up so that you've got a, 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 something akin to a single sign-on. You use your wordpress.org credentials. And and it does all of that. And, and he's already built the functionality. You know, you've got to link it up to some SMTP um, company or what have you. But you can reply to people that have received an invite but haven't replied or people who have agreed to attend. And it automatically creates an attendance page. And, you know, it just does all that heavy lifting, really, that meetup.com would do. So the, the idea at the moment, and Patricia, uh, who might be in the comments, I don't know, she put a proposal together saying, let's run this in tandem. Like, why not just run it with a meetup and gather press at the same time and just see what the what the missing feature set is. So anyway, sorry, uh, Mark or uh, Carlin, over to you. I, I personally love the idea. Yeah. I, I'm I I just am. I can't tell you how much in love with this idea I am. And maybe it's it's because I'm toying with the idea of starting a local meetup here. Um, I have always gone to meetup.com to look for WordPress meetups um, and and uh, other things, but mostly WordPress meetups. That's where I go. And uh, I've always kind of had a, a kind of this love hate relationship with meetup.com uh, since 10 years ago or whenever it was that I found my first WordPress meetup. Um, but the key, as you mentioned, uh, Nathan, is going to be uh, community wide adoption. Uh, of this project and i hope that it goes somewhere because uh you know first of all it's community driven it's open source it's all the things that wordpress is and and why not include this in there as well since meetups are a big part of what grows our community in the first place to so. some extent i can't quite work out why it doesn't why a project like this didn't gather uh, you know, d d didn't occur a decade or more ago because it, it mm. almost feels like going to a SaaS platform is peculiar, given given the capabilities of all of the people involved in the community. It feels like you know nobody's inventing the wheel here. There's calendars and email and you know a page that's put together with some kind of archive or I don't know. Um, it's odd. I, I find it. I, th I think there's a lot of you know a lot of brain damage that gets in gets into building something like this, and maybe nobody, everybody was like, this is so easy to just go on Meetup, and yeah. and honestly, you know, back when it was uh, you know the the foundation, Meetup was adopted by the foundation years and years ago, and mm -hmm. so it just kind of became the de facto standard of how we did things, uh, and you know if you look at you know, one of the other subjects you're going to be bringing up shortly is this idea of different types of events. You know, there is the 
this is the way things were traditionally done. And now all of a sudden, I think it's post pandemic and we're kind of looking at things and going, we have to come up with other ways to do things now. And that's probably part of the thinking is, okay, let's look at everything we've been doing and let's see if we can make some things better. I, I don't know. I mean, that's my speculation, but. I, I kind of like the idea that if, if I was running a meetup, like let's say in my part of the world, I kind of like the idea that if I had this uh, capability within a, within a plugin, I could then make my page look like how I want it, you know, just create yeah. a pattern, uh, yeah. consuming the data that GatherPress uh, brings to bear and then yeah. make it look like where I live, apart from, you know, not this white, black and red generic thing, which honestly, it's so uninteresting. <laughs> the it, it, it is. Absolutely. Like, it doesn't Absolutely. sell anything, does it? You know, no. it's not giving yeah. anything about the venue or the kind of, I don't know. I'm, I just think I got to tell you, I. I do have notifications turned on on Meetup, and every time I get a Meetup notification, I just roll my eyes, like ah. nine times out of ten, <laughs> yeah. because it's like this is going to be something else I'm not interested in going right. to. Right. Right. Okay. So, um, uh, yeah, yeah I, 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 you know, I, like I said, I have a love hate relationship for it. I prefer to do the work and go for looking what I want to. I don't need to have all these notifications and suggestions, and and like you said, the website is not compelling. Um, Courtney joins us saying, uh, I think a decade ago, folks looking to connect used Meetup more. Okay, okay. That's an interesting point. Um, also, the WP project uses a few paid services that specialize in what they do. Uh, okay, so there's connections to, for example, things like Slack and GitHub. Okay, so there's there's wheels within wheels. There's cogs in the background that I, I'm really not that yeah. familiar with. So. The other... The other thing to keep in mind is that there is a level of control that that has to happen at the wordpress.org level in order to make sure these are all mapped together and that they're that they are part of the ownership of the different groups so they know what's happening and know what's going on. So I'm a meetup organizer. I, you know, take the time to go put things out on, on meetup.com and then I share it and I do a thing and I and whether you like the notifications or not, Mark, a lot of our members remember to put to come to, and we meet at the same time every month, first Monday yeah. of every month, six thirty. But that's what reminds people mm -hmm. to actually join the meetup, or to which to is why I have them turned on in the first place. Is exactly. for the, then you'd yeah. Be. Exactly. yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it's like you but, know, I have to take all the other stuff in order to get to the stuff I want. But you know. as a community team member, because I am on the community team as well, and I was part of the re. I can't remember what we called it, but the re-energy, re I can't think of words, re-energizing of uh, meetups post-pandemic is that we were able to, like I'm a super user for WordPress on um, meetups, so I can go in and look at all of the different meetups and I can you know, message people through there. How is your meetup going? Are you ready to get things up and rolling again? So we had that for about a year getting, you know, reaching out to the different meetup groups to make sure that if they wanted to get started again, if they didn't, how could we find other people in the organization? And so there was a lot of work that happened. And because it was all central in one place on meetup.com, that was easy for us to do, easier for us to do than if we had to start trying to find all of those different meetups other places. So I think there's just a level of trying to make sure that it replicates a lot of those same um, features so that from the top down, we're still able to see everything that happens, still able to interact with organizers. And if organizers fall off or, you know, stop work, you know, being part of their meetups that we can still reach out to other group members. So there's a lot that needs to go on to make sure that we still as WordPress are supporting and helping the different groups um, all over the world to stay healthy. Okay, that's a really interesting context as well, because that put, puts a completely different spin on it to me. I had this idea that it would all just be great to go to a <laughs> WordPress plugin because it would just be great to have it inside of WordPress. But you're saying that it really had utility, especially in that period where it needed the community needed a bit of a kickstart mm -hmm. because of the because of the nature of the I guess the pyramid structure of the um, of the permissions that you get and what have you. And if you're mm -hmm. a super user, you you had more power. Yeah, that is interesting. Okay. I guess, though, having said all that, that could be built inside a multi-site network. <laughs> it could be. Absolutely. Yeah. It's just a matter of making sure that all of those yeah. ch boxes are checked yeah. before we would migrate to something like that so that we don't lose any of yeah. what we have now. Right. Carlin, anything on this? Well, I have a soft spot for Meetup. You know, um, ah, controversy. Yes. <laughs> no, 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 not at all. I, I think, obviously, with anything like this there's there's pros and cons to everything right so i have a soft spot because 
like me, Meetup is an OG of the internet, you know, and so it has been around forever. And um, the way that I found my first WordPress Meetup was very likely because I was already on Meetup for other things um, like right. blogging uh, or learning to code when I was younger or whatever it may be, because there's other interests. So the thing that I think we'd lose from moving all of the WordPress events into its own thing, I think there's a lot to gain, far more to gain than, than this one thing, but is people that use WordPress are not just the people that build WordPress or the people that like to talk about the community of WordPress or people that uh, make money on WordPress. There are people that knit that use WordPress every day. There are people that fly fish in uh, amazing rivers throughout the world that use WordPress every day. And none of them are engaged in the communities that the four of us are. Um, and so if they're on meetup and they're in a fly fishing group, but they knew, need help with their website, if they happened to see like Michelle had brought out, if they happen to see that in the Rochester area for her, now there's a meetup that has to do with the software that she's using to run her website. Well, then you end up going to that. And then now you're edu you're, you get some help, which was huge. The WordPress meetups back uh, very early on and probably still today, I do attend a fair number of them, is that someone could go in there and say, how do I update my blog colors? Yeah. Right. Um, how do I xyz right nowadays wordpress is incredibly complicated compared to what it was when i started with it um so yeah i think that there's some of that you know just the the overlapping of these different communities that we would lose by it all being so wordpress centric it'd be great yeah you know it'd be great because now you have the ability to bring some of those features onto WP Build's website now. And now it communicates maybe even with the WordPress.org site. And if there's an event, both of them could be up to date with each other. And all of those things would be fantastic. And obviously, when you have control of the source, then if, a, if Meetup has a feature or does not have a feature that someone has been wanting for a long time, it could easily get done. But there is that little bit of an overlap, the Venn diagram of why someone uses WordPress as opposed to the fact that they use WordPress. Uh, and the reason why they use WordPress is probably just to uh, sell their jewelry or whatever it may be, whatever their interest is. Um, so that's, that's something I think we would lose. And I might shed one tear for Meetup when that happens. But um, maybe maybe there's a way to use the Meetup API too if, if uh, Bending Spoons is, is you know fine with it. Maybe there's a way that these meetups could still be reflected in the meetup ecosystem so that that still happens. If I'm if I'm in Phoenix, Arizona, and I look up events that are in my area, it would still be really cool if there was something that showed, hey, there's going to be like 15 people at a coffee shop talking about WordPress on Monday. Wouldn't it be, you know, maybe I'll pop in there because I heard of WordPress or whatever. Yeah, that's really interesting. You put a really different side to it. And I think I think both you and Michelle have painted a a really credible picture for why why it's not a question of throwing the baby out. Do you use that phrase for throw the baby out with the bath? I try I try not to. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was just as soon as I said <laughs> we it, are I thought, familiar with just, it. <laughs> yeah, okay. But you know, you know what I mean. Um you don't just throw throw, throw good after bad or something like that. Um <laughs> and there's a lot of maybe there is a lot more utility in it than I thought. Um that's that's fascinating. But the idea of um yeah, I I kind of like the idea of it being federated some way around a central multi-site network and let's say that on wp build i installed that plugin and i could then in some way connect to that and advertise my wordpress related events obviously they'd have to be a gatekeeper saying yeah nathan's allowed but this other thing over there which has nothing to do with wordpress and all the inevitable spam i just kind of like the idea of that but you make a really good point um if we're trying to find new people mm -hmm. then maybe maybe something based upon wordpress is kind of is locking them out because unless they've already found their yeah, way in, yeah. um, they're going to struggle with something that isn't like me. Yeah. Maybe there is something about the API. Okay. Um, thank you for that. That was, that was interesting. I enjoyed that. That was very compelling Colin. Yeah. I'm rethinking all of it now. Yeah. I, I think, so. I, I think <laughs> I'm going to go back and have a lie down after this. Um, 
Patrick Posner's joining us. Hi, Patrick. He says, uh, is it impersonate Nathan Day? Uh, I'll get a cap on. <laughs> well, we know <laughs> Michelle has a, a history of trying to look like me. <laughs> and I do it well. Yeah, she does. <laughs> does it actually very well uh there was an episode mark and uh carlin where michelle literally showed up like looking she dressed it was up halloween like though let's yeah, it was, it was uh, halloween <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah it wasn't a weird stalking thing it's not every day for you then <laughs> is what you're saying <laughs> no okay. no okay right let's stay on the theme of wordpress events but let's mention a particular uh event in uh well, let me just find the button. Where's it gone? There we go. Uh, WordCamp Asia 2024 is coming around the corner. I just thought this was a really nice article. It's over at wp-content.co, and it's entitled WordCamp Asia 2024, a comprehensive guide to attendees. And it's got the usual stuff, you know, where is it, when is it, what what are the, uh, what are the you know, the top level items and what have you. Uh, it shows us the official uh, <laughs> soup dumpling, Wapu, uh, He's looking so as, cute. Uh, yeah, there's something <laughs> there's something ab about eating too many uh, dumplings about the, about that, isn't it? It's kind of a round wapu. Um, and then the the speaker lineup, which hasn't been announced so far. I don't know if the tickets are still available, but on this post it says they are. But I'm not sure if there's any left still. But the bit that I thought was interesting, if anybody watching this or listening to this is going, was this little bit tucked in at the end and. I'm always fascinated. There was a period of my life where I traveled a lot and uh, etiquette, you really, you know, if you're a traveler, you want to approach people's country and sort of be the deferential visitor and not put your foot in it. So I thought this was just a lovely thing for them to put in. I don't know uh, where this information comes from. There's a lot more in this article about, you know, the kind of things that you can do in your free time or what have you, but let's just go back to this bit. Here's some travel etiquette uh, when you visit Taiwan so that you don't become frowned upon. Um, so first up, the official language is Mandarin Chinese. I suspect that in the f five weeks or four weeks that I've got left, that's not happening. I'm, <laughs> I'm unlikely to master Mandarin Chinese. So we'll just gloss over that. Um, but here's a thing, right? So you're not supposed to use the word for, like the number four, or death in public. Now I can kind of understand death, but four is an interesting one. And apparently it's because the word four is, uh, has some sort of superstition attached to it. So avoid uttering that in public places. Uh, don't get involved in politics. I'm not going to put my foot in that one. Um, so we'll just quickly move along. Um, when making use of public transport, don't eat, drink or smoke. I mean, I, I don't know if it means drink as in literally consume liquid or, you know, alcohol. But I guess if it's eating and drinking, don't do that. So, again, that's kind of different to where to my part of the world. If you are having food and it includes chopsticks, do not put your chopsticks vertically. It's frowned upon, something to do with incense sticks. The norm is to place them on the bowl. Um, across the top so that they're nice and horizontal. When meeting locals for the first time, handshaking is not the recommended thing to do. It's a, a slight nod, slight bow. Um, you can do handshaking. It doesn't seem like it's, uh, you know, verboten, but it's not, the, it's not the way to do it. And finally, okay, I love it. Don't give gifts of clocks handkerchiefs, watches, candles, or, I mean, I would say this goes everywhere, knives, <laughs> um, and white flowers because of uh, superstitions attached to those. So mm. apropos of nothing, except the WordPress community is heading there, there's some interesting stuff. Does anybody want to chip in there? Just <laughs> so, I, as a I, as a person who wrote a book called A Good Firm Handshake, and then the the pandemic happened, I wanted to change the title of the book anyway. So I will just say, also having came come back from WordCamp Europe last year with with COVID, I think avoiding mm -hmm. handshaking is just the right thing to do in today's society anyway. So I, I actually like I like the slight bow and the head bow, and I've been doing that ever since I got back from Bangkok last year. Yeah. Um, I just yeah. think it makes sense. And if you're stabbing your chopsticks in your food, that is just that's that would be you wouldn't do that with your fork. Don't do it with your chopsticks. Oh no! The, <laughs> the way I read it was like when you're not doing anything, holding them sort of vertically. Right, is... but also like sometimes oh, I see. people if you're like jabbing, stick them yeah, in the yeah, rice yeah, or yeah, stick yeah, them yeah, in yeah, yeah. I, I mean I've seen board. people at yeah like stick them in the rice or stick them in the food to just but don't do that either you wouldn't like just do that with your fork so don't do that with your chopsticks <laughs> 
This Mike, is a very it interesting. Like you to speak. This, um, yeah, this is a very interesting list. Um, and at first, I, you know, we we talked earlier about this list just briefly, and I I thought of, um, which I don't think I'm going to make this comparison anymore, but I did. It made me think of Richard Stallman's Rider, which if you've never read it, you could do a Google search and have a laugh about what Richard Stallman uh, would like to see at events that he shows up to. It's 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 comical, if anything. But this is a culture that we're talking about here, which obviously is very beautiful, and it's very nice to be able to fit in when you go to visit different places. Um, so I wonder if we could talk about um, what would we create as our list of etiquette for the UK or for the United States if someone were to be visiting our uh respected areas and coming to an event from somewhere else what would we say that people should do yeah i think i think the the, the feature that i can think of in the uk is embrace self-deprecating humor uh, <laughs> you have to take the 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 mickey out yourself i was going to use mm -hmm. a different word there but i'll probably get banned on youtube um <laughs> you you have to take the mickey out yourself that would be one thing uh bring an umbrella would certainly be another uh, piece of advice, and also be very, very willing to 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 just to just accept the tidal wave of moaning, which is going to come your way, because <laughs> I think the British are fairly well known for uh, for moaning. So get a good load of moaning lined up so that you've got things to <laughs> complain about. <laughs> One thing that I would throw on there, if, if you know, and I would never have thought of this until I have traveled internationally now, is not to comment negatively on people's appearances here in the mm. States, for sure. So having traveled, I've been, you know, I've been, people have commented on my weight and on my skin. And I was just like, and, and I didn't mean it, you know, in a mean way, but it still is like to hear somebody say something negative about you to your face. It's just like, you get a little taken aback, right? So oh, I, I, see. I, would, I yeah, like, okay. you know, if somebody says, to, somebody said to me, why is your face so broken out? And I was just like rude, <laughs> but I, I, didn't, uh, I, didn't, I didn't say they were rude to their. I don't know if that. I don't know if that culture. should be a U.S. only thing, Michelle. I think that should go yeah, everywhere just, in the world. That's please. just human right, sensitivity. But, yeah. But but yeah. in other cultures, commenting on people's appearance is just a way to say hello, you know, or perhaps. Hmm. Um, so there are other cultures in which, you know, it's it's actually asking after one's health as opposed to. Saying so, you know, I've, I've noticed this flaw about you, <laughs> but that's mm -hmm. how we take it here. So, we, um, can, you, can you make a list of all the places that that happened to you and let it be known? Yeah. So, I don't <laughs> <forget>. <laughs> that's right. One of the uh, one of the um, the things that I noticed when I went to the U.S. So this is not some. Well, this is more what we don't do that you do do. You are really happy to talk about money, and in the mm -hmm. U.K., that's like. That's basically off the table. That conversation, mm -hmm. does, like you never, ever, ever talk about how much you earn. Never. Um, you know, even if it's obvious that you earn a ton of money because you're driving around in a Rolls Royce, you still don't do it. You wouldn't mention the numbers. But in my period of time in the US, I remember hearing people like just just shooting the breeze about what they earn. Yeah. They're like, oh, what are they doing? It's so different. I I actually grew up the same way that you do not mm -hmm. talk about how much money you make you do not mm -hmm. talk about anything that has to do with money um what you do for a living is not what defines you and 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 i to this day i get very uncomfortable having grown up in the united states when people talk about how much money they make or when they when they're showing off whatever they may have or you know talking about these things it makes me uncomfortable so yeah um uh i i yeah i i understand what you're saying about that for sure and <laughs> Let, one of the, the things US that is... just came up in the chat by the way and i was going to bring this up going back yeah. to the number four i actually wikipedia this uh, and mm. it's and and then uh, Mr. Panzer Dragon uh, or Dragoon, I'm sorry, uh, brought it up, is uh, that the number four, according to Wikipedia, and 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 this confirms it, is that the number four sounds like the word death when you say it, <gasps> and so that's why you don't say it out loud. And I'm sure that if it were me, an American, trying to speak you know, uh, Mandarin Chinese, I'd probably butcher it so bad that it would sound exactly like death. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I can see why now. 
Yeah. I, I, I want to comment on what you said about not talking about money. And I grew up the same way. You know, I'm I'm 55, and that was definitely the way I grew up. However, I will tell you that since I've been doing DEIB work, especially here in the United States, normalizing talking about salary helps create um, yeah. a, a more even playing field. So if I say how much I make and somebody else says how much they make and we are working at the same company at the same level and that man is making a whole lot more than me or as a white person and a black person, those kinds of things, yeah. then you go, then you start to say, ha, ah, that's not so fair. That's not right. And so it's actually made it a more even playing field as far as salary negotiations. So I'm all for it. <laughs> So we have an anonymous person. I mean, yes. not anonymous necessarily, but we can't see who you are and I'm not logged into Facebook. So apologies for that. Uh, who says, a lack of sharing your salary is something pushed by employers so they can get away with not paying everyone equally. Yeah, I don't know who that is, but that sounds like something Pizza would tell us. So yeah, that might uh, be Okay, yeah, Pizza, <laughs> is that you lurking anonymously? Um, it's but not, the, thank you, whoever it is. <laughs> yeah, the, the interesting thing is, it, it is just, it's, it's an unwritten bit of social etiquette in the UK. And nobody, I, I don't ever remember the moment when somebody who was older, like a parent, said to me, don't talk about money. It's just, it never happened. And then you'd be in rooms where the, maybe the conversation was going in that direction. Then you could see everybody pulling back and you just learn, you just learn. But you're right. But I found it really refreshing when I went to America. For, at the beginning, I was like, oh, somebody just mentioned. And then I kind of, <laughs> and then it just. Like, oh, we all where were you? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I, I spent a year, I bought a, I bought a car oh. and drove across. So. Oh, okay. I was just going to say, because in my experience traveling through the United States, everywhere is so different from one another. You know, you spend yeah. about eight seconds in a coffee shop in San Francisco and you'll be sitting next to someone that just raised $20 million. Right. And they are yeah. letting yeah. you know yeah. that that's what they just did. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then, you, you know, you go somewhere else and it might be a lot more conservative and they don't really bring those sorts of things up. Right. But um, yeah, it's, it's nice to, that we have so many different cultures, but I, I fear the list that I would create. I think it's very easy right now to make fun of the United States from outside because uh, you could make a, a list that would um, not be very kind. Uh, but, you know, that's the that's the world that we live in. But hopefully by sharing these lists, I'm very appreciative to the event owners, yeah. or the event organizers to share a list like that, because I think mm -hmm. maybe that should be done a little bit more. Um, obviously, we it, it wasn't that long ago that events didn't have a uh, code of codes of conduct. Um, and I think that event organizers that are thinking of putting something together as small as a meetup, as we were talking before, or as large as a word camp should give that portion of their organization for the event as much thought as anything else. Uh, you know, how diverse is the set of speakers that we're going to have? How, yeah how are we going to allow the attendees to be a diverse set of attendees, whether that be the economics of the ticket price or the accessibility of the event or what have you. And then also rules or the codes of conduct being able to say, well, we will not accept these sorts of things at our event. Otherwise you're going to be asked to leave right away, which we've seen, unfortunately, so many events have had things happened at them that, um, have led to terrible outcomes. And I think the more that we get the information publicly available and live by those things, then and something as simple as just knowing what words not to say when you visit a foreign country, I think we should do more of that. Yeah. And so just to be clear, I don't think this article was uh, created by the uh, the team behind the event. So it's a okay. it's a WP dash content uh, is the website. So but I, I like you, uh, Carlin, I was just I, I was just thankful that somebody had made the effort to uh, to put that little section in because uh, with the best will in the world, that probably wouldn't have been on the top of my list of research. Mm -hmm. It would more have been research about, well, this kind of thing, where to go when there's time off or, you know, where to meet friends and all of that kind of thing. But throwing that in there um, was, was very, very helpful. And I don't think anybody who's going to be attending that event wants to go in not knowing right. that kind of information. So that's that's really good. And it led to a really interesting... Uh, conversation. So, first of all, the uh, the person who wrote the the Facebook comment was not Peach. It was, it was or at least I presume Matt. it wasn't, because it was the uh, it was the comment immediately after it was Matt. 
uh, carrying this bizarre conversation on. Uh, in London, in the UK, it's not the norm to say hello to strangers. Now, that's so weird, isn't it? We're so weird. <laughs> I started to say hello or good morning and actually got many strange looks. Someone even thought I wanted to rob them. Oh, we're so I found, I found the same thing to be true in Greece, though. People oh. are not... When when we were in, I don't know, Michelle, if you experienced this, but I would say hi to people and they'd look at me funny, but they were the nicest people in the world. Yeah. But just it not, wasn't it, yeah. just their go to. It's to, not a thing that to, you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah say yeah. hi to a complete stranger. Yeah. So, and then and I then, had people asking me for directions because they thought I looked Greek and I don't speak a word. So that, <laughs> that was also a little bit uh, off putting. But yeah, yeah. Paul Halfpenny joining us. Hi, Paul. Um, uh, a member, a family member once got upset because my mom talked about splitting the lunch bill whilst at the table. Uh, she thought that it was rude to discuss money. Yeah, tip, tip it. Oh, now there's the one. There's the there crucial difference yeah. between us on this side of yeah. the pond and yeah. you guys over there. It's expected. The first time I set foot in North America was in Canada. And the, I got more or less got off the plane and went to a bar. And I did what I do in the UK. I paid the money and then I walked away from the bar. And the barman, just, he just slammed his fist. He was like, you, come here. And I was like, OK. Sorry, what did I do? <laughs> yeah, what did, and he said, you got a tip. And I was like, OK, sorry. I mean, in some part of my brain, I knew that was a thing, but I didn't realize it was de rigueur. Um, it's starting, because we it's do, starting not, to be we do not pay them. OK, it's starting yeah. to be included. Yeah, here yeah. it's just not yeah. really a thing. You just, yeah. you, it's, you know, um, it's just not yeah. really a thing. So eight is a lucky number and seven in but not in taiwan okay uh da, 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 unsolicited high percent okay uh i don't quite understand that unsolicited high equals it really equals uh high percent that such people are asking for money in europe okay so uh, somebody says hi you're thinking they're gonna they're trying to panhandle take, yeah, take, oh, pan, yeah okay that's, that's the thing that's panhandle is that a phrase i've never heard that yeah oh yeah, yes okay Okay. It's like give um, your hand out for money. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Nilo says, okay, so I'm the only person who shows morning at work. <laughs> I do too, right. Nilo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow. So that was really interesting. But anyway, the long and the short of it is thank you. That was such an interesting thing to have written down. And it certainly got Absolutely. us talking, didn't it? That was great. Okay. So let's just stay on that event just for a brief moment. Uh, here's a list of the, the speakers. If you go to WordCamp. Uh, sorry, asia.wordcamp.org 2024 uh, and then forward slash speakers. You'll be able to see the speaker lineup. I don't think we've actually got the uh, the topics listed there yet, but here they are, the great and the good. I think the schedule is out now. Is it? Okay. I can't. Mm -hmm. I didn't find that initially. But as long as you, there you go. No, mm -hmm. look at this. We've got uh, Matt Mullenweg <laughs> on this page. Fascinating. <laughs> is that the only person you see there? Is that the only person you see? <laughs> <laughs> no, I was trying to be annoying. Uh, look, look, look where Matt ended up. Uh, next to Michelle. Let's say it that way around. He, Matt, how, he is the how person. fortunate for Matt. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <He> is, <laughs> Matt was <laughs> Thank yeah. you, Colin. He yeah. is the person that called me the busiest woman in WordPress. So. Yeah. Oh, that's brilliant. So there they I all are. I was going to say, I did, I did see your bio. Michelle, uh, before we got on this episode, and I thought, man, I am not working hard enough, clearly, because <laughs> you you have a lot more links in your bio than I do, so I yeah. need to really yeah. get on it. It's based upon I mean, the I take that I take that yellow thing really seriously. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, so there's more comments coming in. Yeah, tipping tipping is uh, so weird here in the states. Uh, that was from uh, Mister Mister Panzer Dragoon. Uh, Marcus, uh, I'd be more than happy to pay people what they deserve and do always with tipping nonsense. Uh, years ago, I tried to tip somebody in Germany. It caused quite a kerfuffle. Mm. So the exact opposite. Uh, do you want to tip? No, because the answer is often no. It's like. What? No, that's weird. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, there we go. So there's the speaker lineup. And here is something else. We'll just briefly gloss over this uh, because as we are fast running out of time. Uh, last year, the, the call went out for uh, let's think about WordPress events again. We're doing a lot about events today, aren't we? Never mind. Um, and the idea of these next gen events, and that was the label that was going to be applied to them in the interim, uh, an idea of coming up with a, a different format, not necessarily for the flagship WordPress events, you know, the Europe and the US and the um, Asia ones, but more the other ones, the city based ones like London and so on. How can we tweak uh, what they are? How can we 
change them around a little bit. So maybe there was some intuition that after the pandemic, the, the number of attendees was falling. Maybe there was a decline in interest in sponsorships. I'm not really 100% sure on what was the, the cause of that. But there was a this idea of next-gen events and playing with them. Since then... There's a list here, which you can see on the page. If you're listening to it, apologies. But I'm going to put my finger in the air and say there's about 12. 12 WordPress events took place uh, pitching some difference. You know, Maybe it was related to SEO or it was related to, I don't know, children or something like that. Um, and the idea really at the moment is to clarify what this means going forwards. And so they've put together what an ideal WordPress event represents, um, which really is four bullet points. And, it's it's very generic. It's not you know it's not giving you specifics about what you must do, but also maybe this is slightly more helpful. Um, there's going to be some tooling uh, around um, what WordPress events organizers have got at their disposal. Not really any word on that yet, but the idea that you know if you're using um, sorry creating these events, you'll have some tools and resources that you're available. Um, and then there's also some messages here about uh, how that works for global sponsors and what have you. I, I'm briefly rushing over that. I had a lot more to say, but because of the time, I'm just saying that. So if any of you have got something to say there, please do so. But the um, the post was written by Julia uh, Golom, Golom. I'm not sure. Sorry, Julia. Uh, and it's called Reflecting on Next Gen Events Pilot Project and Looking Ahead. So I'll just pause for a minute, see if anybody wants to interrupt. If not, I'll move on. I'm just excited to see some of the different things that will come out of that, including the, the I think the last thing we added for today, which we'll talk about later. Yeah. So it was things like, you know, uh, this, so there was one in, uh, I can't pronounce that, Gidenia, uh, and it was focused on optimization work in WordPress. Then there was a dedicated day for WordPress event organizers. And there was a one called All About Scaling Up, which was in Indonesia, focusing on enhancing participants' WordPress skills for the enterprise world. So you see, they all just take a sort of, you know, um, a sort of specific subject and run with it. And we'll have to see. Career camp at Kolkata. Out. Yeah, it's interesting, right? Jakarta cool, website yeah. pitching competition where participants were encouraged to submit and showcase their websites. Yes. It feels a bit like throwing spaghetti at the wall and seeing what sticks, which maybe is exactly the right approach at the moment. You know, try things out, see what mm -hmm. the community come back with as, you know, that was enjoyable, that didn't work, that did work, the sponsors didn't care for that, but they really love this. Let's see. Okay, shall we move on? I just wanted to point out this because I know Michelle likes it. Uh, if you want to see where <laughs> WordPress events are, you can go to events.wordpress.org and there's a fabulous map. And uh, mm -hmm. I'm just going to refresh the page. Why does it always start in North America? Why? <laughs> every map, every, every map always starts. Number in North of America. events? I don't know. Yeah, I'm guessing. Uh, I can't even zoom out now. But anyway, there you go. They're all listed. You there. should commit a change, Nathan, that would uh, adjust the map to wherever you're browsing from, or to Yorkshire in the UK. <laughs> Just send it right in. Just be specific. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. You have to zoom out, depending on where you are. Anyway, that's a lovely, lovely uh, project. Uh, Events.wordpress.org. Um, just a quick hat tip. Again, I wanted to say more about this. If the panel do want to say more about this, then again, please interrupt before we move on. Um, this is to say Big at Poorly Hack has given a lot of thought to what happens now that the full site editing outreach program has come to an end. Where does where does it carry on? Because obviously uh, site editing, as it's now called, that endeavor is not dead. It's just moved to a different phase and maybe outreach is no longer the point after phase two of the Gutenberg project came to an end. So did this really in theory. And the, the intuition is to move all of the communications over to a dedicated Slack channel with the hashtag outreach and everything goes there. But the, the piece that she wrote is proposal. What's next for the outreach? reach program um and i'll just leave it hanging there anything else on that no okay so again apropos of nothing i wrote this post on twitter the other day forgive me it's not supposed to be self-promotional in fact i'll just take it off the screen it doesn't matter um <laughs> the but the post was i got cornered by somebody on a zoom call the other day and they said how would you sum up wordpress in one word and i thought that's curious i like that and i, it, I ended up with the word kind that's 
what it ended up being for me, you know. And so I then posted it on Twitter, and um, and I'll give you a selection of the replies that came through. See if any of these work for you. Multidimensional. Ooh. Um, <laughs> da, 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 da. Helpful. Accessible. Friendly. Creative. Open. Welcoming. I like this one. Feisty. Woo. <laughs> uh, inclusive. Helpful. Leftist. Mm. Uh, supportive, diversity, accessible, amateur. Don't know if that's a dig or not, but I'm, I'm going to read it anyway. Innovative, diverse, helpful, resilient. Democrats don't even know what that means. I know that's a party in the US, but I'm, I'm going to, I presume there's a pitfall that I could fall into there. I'm sure and, it goes and the last along one, with left, leftist. Oh, okay. And then the last one is two faced. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to throw it out there. You've had enough time well, these, to think. Well, these I've sound like these sound like comments that would only happen on X. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. yeah, I rarely post on Twitter something that requires a reply, but I just thought that was kind of interesting. So go on, round. Let's go round the horn. Uh, let's start with Michelle. What would your What would be your one word? Growing. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I think and, we're still evolving. Yeah. Oh, in that sense. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Got it. Carlin, what about you? I liked the open one. It's interesting. The the responses seemed like they were mainly focused on the community, yeah, as opposed to just the piece of software, right? Um, mm -hmm. So that's interesting. Yeah, um, nobody wrote code. <laughs> well, it's interesting. So as a developer, I when when you first asked that question, my immediate thing was, how do I describe WordPress in one word? The software, not necessarily the community. Um, so open was. Um, obviously that's the re reason why it was founded. And so, yeah, open would be my okay response. I like it. I like it. And finally, Mark. I, I was going to go for the obvious umbrella term, which is just community. I mean, that really is, um, mm -hmm. first of all, sure. The software drew me into the WordPress, but what had me stick with WordPress was community. And yeah. so it's all of those things that everybody said, including two faced. I mean, you know, it, it, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's all of those things because that's what community is to a degree <laughs> is it's, it's, you know, but that also means all inclusive. So um, honestly, if you'd have asked the 18 year old me, so the 18 year old me lived in a universe where the internet didn't exist. I think maybe some, some lunatic somewhere had a dial up modem, which you actually put your phone on but nobody had the internet. If you'd have said to me, okay, when you're how old I am, insert number, big number. Um, Less than be, me. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you'll, be, you'll be looking at a screen and you'll be chatting to people on a screen and they will be your air quotes, but not air quotes, friends. I would have gone, no, that's weird. No way is that going to happen. That's, I don't, mm -hmm. don't want to do any of that. That's all wrong and weird. Fast forward to... 2024, I'm loving it. I love all that stuff. I love the fact that I can get <laughs> yeah. online with you three and you're all over the place and we can have a conversation about like etiquette in different parts of the world and all that. It is amazing. And very occasionally I sit at this desk and I bet you've had the same thing. You just get that epiphany of like, how the heck did I get so lucky that I picked this community and it's got this bunch of people in it. And it's all right, there's a little bit of falling out from time to time, but way less than there should be. There should be way more falling out, and there isn't. So I feel very lucky uh, that that happened. I'm going to shed I, I, it here. <laughs> I think that it's because I think it's because fundamentally we all share the same ideal, and so we get a little bit passionate about it, and that's why you have the fallout from time to time. Mm -hmm. But it's because everybody loves not just what it <clears throat> what it's evolved into or what what has evolved but they love where it can go and so we become very very passionate about what we want it to become and and sometimes it ends in in, in conflict but uh, most of the time you know people are open to listening to what it's all about and where we want it to go and and i love that about uh, this community. I've always been a big believer that community is where it's where it's at, and finding that in an entrepreneurial setting is very difficult. 
And so when a lot of us have discovered the WordPress community, it, it just was like, yeah, this is what I've been wanting kind of my whole life. And I think when you all talk about your age, I think I'm the oldest one here. I'm telling you, it's really something special. And so we fight tooth and nail to protect what's so special about it. Yeah. I'm so glad I'm not the oldest person. <laughs> it's I actually, <laughs> I actually don't mind that I'm the no, oldest person. So, no, no, uh, yeah. I was only pulling your leg. Okay. I know. That, so fabulous. Thank you for that. I thought that was, I didn't know whether I was going to drop that one or not, but uh, Marcus Burnett has come back quite rightly to say that the WP world, you can find that by Googling it. WP world uh, shows the whole world. Uh, so Marcus is about <laughs> where it's not just to do with events, it's to do with like, you know, all sorts of different yeah. things the in the whole WordPress community, mm -hmm. whole community. And, uh, and it shows the whole world. Okay, great. That's, that's an improvement. Thank you. And it's a cool but, website too. But Marcus, way. I'll, I'll yeah. bung yeah. you $10 and could you just make it start in Yorkshire and zoom out? <laughs> yeah, that'd be good. All right. Okay. Let's move on. So that sounds like a good way to make money, by the way, Marcus, as you just like, Who's going to sponsor me this week on WP World? And that's where it's going to zoom in <laughs> that's first. That's right. It's going to start yeah. a little bidding yeah. war. Yeah. yeah. There you go. <laughs> zoom out from the headquarters yeah. of You get that idea company. for free market. <laughs> Have fun, right? uh, so I didn't know if this existed or not, but um, it, I, th I think it's new. Uh, really, forgive me if this has been around for ages, but I think this is new. Uh, the website is developer.woo.com. So we're no longer using the term WooCommerce for this kind of thing. Um, and here it is. It's a website dedicated to the documentation all around the, the WooCommerce project. So really, what else is there to say um, other than that it's there and you can go and uh, browse it at your leisure. Menu on the left, sort of giving away that there's really an awful lot put into the one website. So again, forgive me if it was there before, but it only came across my radar recently. Uh, anything or shall I move on? Alrighty, I will move on. It has the word developer <laughs> in it, so you lost me right there. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, that's it, yeah, sn snore. A uh, couple of pieces over at developer.wordpress.org, um, and I like to feature these when they come up. It's just because I, I think this is such a nice project, loads of nice documentation coming. It's a couple of tutorials. The first one by Nick Diego, uh, which is a, a really nice, quick 10 minute, 15 minute read showing you how you can disable specific blocks within WordPress. Obviously, I won't go into it because it's a bunch of code, but that's kind of nice. There's probably a whole bunch of things that your clients or you yourself really don't need to be using on your website. So yeah, why not disable them? Give that a go. And then Justin Tadlock um, has written a piece calling called Adding Starter Patterns to Your WordPress Themes. And it does exactly what you'd imagine, uh, the idea that you can create a bunch of patterns that your, your the users of your theme uh, can just try out right at the start um, when they're looking at a blank page and they want a bit more inspiration than that. So two things there. Anything on that or shall we move on? Okay. I just like that there's effort going into the full site editor and blocks. I um, I am a fan. I know a lot of people are not, um, or people are you know being reluctant to moving towards the full site editor, which I understand because there's a lot of uh, history there with uh, classic themes and things. But um, I just recently had to. Uh, I'm rebuilding my personal website, which I've had for 30 years. <laughs> which is really wow something. okay that yeah. is a good, good um, project wow yeah so i've just spent the last couple of months rebuilding it in wordpress and trying to use the full site editor and trying not to write code as a developer that is very difficult because my in you know my first the first thing i reach for in my toolbox is to write some code um so to just see where is this project and and if I was someone coming into this for the very first time, how would I navigate this and how would I be able to build a website? You know, I have an idea in my mind. How do I then make that a reality? And it does still have a, a quite a long ways to go, but it is very, very well made so far. And it's really as someone who cares about the output of the site and yes, building it is one thing, but what is it? What is the result of it as someone that very is very picky uh for what what ends up resulting on the website it is coming a very long way uh there's still quite a bit of i think we could do a whole episode on that probably nathan someday but 
Yeah. Um, yeah. It, there's quite a bit that, you know, you still need to reach for your toolbox uh, to be able to do. And so some of these things that were covered in those two uh, posts that you had brought out are starting to close that gap. You know, there's there's still quite a few other things. But I don't think you, you, you know this, Nathan, but I started a project called Barley uh, in 2012. Wait, that was I a, know that. What, what was yeah. that? So it was a full site editor. It was it was not built on WordPress orig originally, though we did bring it to WordPress eventually. But it allowed you to edit the entire, you build a website using a WYSIWYG editor. You never had to see an admin. So though Gutenberg and the full site editor is kind of still, you go into an admin and then you choose to update the page that you'd want to update and, and some of the things are previewable in the admin. Some of them are not where you still have to go look at the website when you want to see what the result is. The whole idea of Barley 12 years ago was to never see an admin, never see a text box, always manipulate the page directly on. And there's a lot of tools out there uh, now that that do that far better than we ever accomplished back then. But um, where you, you never really have to see an admin, but I, that's kind of my ideal for an end user is that they can think of what their website should be and they can make that happen somehow. I do, you know, Matt covered some of this AI, like some of his dreams for AI in the state of the word this year about how you should be able to just create a, write a prompt that would say, I would love to have a website that has a blog on it, a portfolio for my images and whatever. And then it would go and then build uh, the website for you. That That is definitely a utopian view. And I think that's 100% would be really cool to, to see happen. But um, for, for someone to be able to drag and drop different things and build the website as they want and all of that, the full site editor definitely does enable that. Um, but it still has a long way to go for someone just to sign into WordPress and build a website. So a couple of things. Firstly, uh, I, I appreciate that. And just highlighting the fact that the developer resources are coming along nicely. I mean, mm -hmm. there's, there's not just Justin and Nick, there's other things happening. But if you go to, uh, so here's the here's the plug, go to developer.wordpress.org and you'll see that it's divided up into a variety of different sections. Um, so we've just been looking at the, the sort of developer blog here, but there's all sorts, you know, block editor themes, plugins, uh, playground, which we'll come to in a minute. Uh, common APIs. So there's just loads, and it's growing. And I think uh, I think a lot of people have been asked to to man this ship um, and put content on there, and that's exactly what they're doing. And I have to ask, uh, Carlin, was it getbarley.com? Yes, it was. I I remember it. You had like there was like a yellow color. Was it yellow? Yeah, yeah. Yep. I I played with that. Oh, I'm in awe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it was I it, it predated medium so medium has that nice writing interface that a lot of people appreciate yeah. nowadays um and and obviously gutenberg now you know with the forward slash kind of interface where you can just add whatever you want by typing in forward slash and all that um it predates all of those things uh we were very early but um but it is a vision it's a vision that a lot of people share for the web which is that you shouldn't, you know, it's the no code movement now. That was something that didn't exist then. Um, but just to be able to allow someone to just build something by not ever needing to write code, which I think, yeah. Yeah. I think people learning to code is super important and is definitely a worthy thing for anyone in any industry at all to learn how to code is still, I think, uh, I would I would highly recommend it. It's a, I I always call it a superpower. My ability to code. You you mentioned earlier about um, kind of pinching yourself that you're involved in the WordPress community and stuff. And I I pinch myself that I chose to be able to program because it's really a superpower. No matter what you do in life, whether you work at a restaurant or you're an artist or whatever. Um, having some ability to code is it can be can be a superpower and um so i do still think that learning and writing code is important but being able to make a piece of software approachable to everybody not just people that can write code is also a very worthy cause that i'm so i'm so i'm still very glad that automatic and and tons of people around the world are 
spending their time trying to advance that even with people that are you know they, they they don't say very kind things sometimes about the full site editor out there yeah uh and yeah. i think i think there is still it's still a worthy effort yeah so you described your coding as a superpower i would describe my coding as a bit of a damp squib um <laughs> My coding is not really going to get me anywhere, in all honesty. Uh, but I'm glad that I'm glad that it serves you well. That's great. I, th um, I so think it's important to at least understand how the sauce is made, right? Yeah, so yeah. even if you're not a good coder, which I am not, as an example, I can look at code and tell what it's going to do. And I think that that helps mm -hmm. in a way to inspire creativity and, and come up with ideas. So, right. And WordPress yeah. does that in spades, doesn't it? You know, if you're just using the no-code solution, uh, there's going to be a point where you're going to think, oh, I wonder if it can do that. And if you're using a proprietary platform, you know the ones where you pay them $19 a month, you're out a lot, mostly. Um, but with WordPress, you can just get the toolkit out and begin. And you don't have to go complicated. You can start with a snippet mm -hmm. or something like that and take it from there. Mm -hmm. um, I, I forked Hello Dolly just as a way to kind of take my fist and take some of the mist off the window and look into what coding looks yeah. like, right? Yeah, perfect. so for the yeah. same reason, yeah. Perfect example. By the way, I've hijacked the uh, the WP World website, and it only cost me ten dollars. <laughs> so, uh, Marcus, you sold send, out too low. Yeah, I'll send you my there latitude and longitude, and you can start up my house. <laughs> well, if it's anything like million dollar homepage, do you guys remember million dollar homepage? Oh yeah, yeah. So yeah. so Marcus, every day increase the amount per per day a, a dollar or something, and so yeah. you know we'll, Marcus, we'll see. At the end of the year, how much you're making? Don't listen yeah. to him, Marcus. I stay at like stay, stay at ten. You should do like pay per clicks and see what people will bid on it, and then you get like you know a, a budget, a, a spend budget every day of what people are willing to spend. His brain is whirring now. He's you've truly yeah. made Marcus's day, I reckon. Um, so we're getting back to the community bit, um, Mr. Panzer Dragoon. It took over a decade before joining the community. Yeah, I wasn't. I mean, it wasn't a decade, but it was certainly a number of years. I just used it as software for years and years and years. And then somehow stumbled into a WordPress event and thought, I'll go to that. And th then thinking, I'm going to sit in a corner. It'll be weird. I won't like it. And then went, and I didn't sit in a corner. And it wasn't weird. And I did like it. And here we are, many, many years later. FSE has come a long way, uh, says Elliot, um, since it's released. But I still need to approach block theming as a developer code allows more flexibility for sure. Uh, the developer blog facelift he carries on is really nice. And there you go. WP Tavern Barley article references the front end editor project being developed for core. Oh, yeah, that yeah. might have had those, those two might those two things might have been related. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and then Igor, FSE is much better than where it was before, but still people are finding it hard to use myself included, but it's getting there themes like Ollie, uh, could help users transition into FSE. Yeah, that was that was an interesting thing when they introduced their onboarding wizard. Anyway, there you go, developer.wordpress.org. You can see it there. Go and have a poke around. You never know, you might discover some little aspect of the project that you want to play with. This is kind of cool if you're into developing things. Up until recently, if you went to playground.wordpress.net, is that right? Yeah, um, you would get up a, a, an install of the of the WordPress software, but you what you might notice is that it, you didn't actually do anything or go anywhere or install anything. That's because by what I can only describe as voodoo, it's <laughs> all being it's all happening inside the browser. I mean, honestly, it's beyond my comprehension how that is even possible. But it was limited to experimenting. So it's the perfect way to experiment with something. You want to play with, a, uh, I don't know, a block or a plugin. This is a good way to do it. And as soon as you close your browser tab, it is gone. Um, but it used to be uh, single sites only. Now, if you append the URL with uh, forward slash query multi-site equals yes, probably can't see that on the screen, but there it is, um, then it will install you a multi-site network. And the same caveat supply once you close the browser. I don't know, actually, I've got this intuition that they're going to make it so that even if you close the browser, you can get back to it at some point. But anyway, there it is. You can now uh, do some more voodoo. <laughs> All right. Anything about that? Probably not. 
Okay, we were talking about learning to code, my friend David Wormsley and I. So in, in a vain attempt to keep up with the number of podcasts that Michelle does, I started another podcast <laughs> okay. with uh, a very good friend of mine who did this podcast for years and years and years. It's called He's called David Wormsley. And we started a, a show called The No Script Web Show. And the idea of this uh, is that this website is as bare as we can get it. And as we cover something each week, we add it to the website and we're on week three and we're just beginning to talk about, um, we're just beginning to talk about intrinsic design in episode four, which is coming out soon. Uh, it's at no script dot show. The idea is we're not dealing with CMSs. We're just going HTML, CSS, W3C, web standards, and keeping it simple kiss that kind of mentality and so if you want to follow along with what we're doing and watch this website go from terrible to slightly less terrible <laughs> uh no script dot show you can follow along what we're doing there and I, obviously i've got to still come up with like 19 other podcasts before i'm uh, getting past the finish line hey. ahead of michelle <laughs> Bob's got us all beat, though, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Bob yeah. Done. yeah. I take comfort, though, that that's all under one brand. Yours are all under different brands. And yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. I think, I think Bob's taken more of a producer role than yeah. anything at this yeah. point, though. Yeah, so, right. yeah. He's, yeah, he's, he's got he's, the right he's idea. He's being smart. He's smart. Yeah. Yeah. He's, yeah, 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 he is. <laughs> Uh, interesting ideas, but I think they'll keep the WP World homepage a bit more inclusive than that. Oh, thought I was going <laughs> to do well out of it. Oh, Never. you and your standards, Marcus. <laughs> Never mind. Anyway, there you go. That's that show. Uh, I just wanted to raise this tool. If you're into podcasting, check this out. It's called podcastle.ai. It's one tool. It just shows the power of the browser. It's now this one tool which enables you to do more or less all the things that you need to do to launch a successful podcast, including recording, editing, uh, adding effects, just loads. It's really clever. I confess I haven't used it. I'm just working off their marketing jingo. But if they deliver on what they promise, it's definitely worth a look. Uh, let's go over to some sub content submitted by our fine guests. Who was this one? Who put in our own your web? I did. Ah. Um, yeah, when I saw that you have a pick of the week, I thought, man, I could send him 100 links. Um, <laughs> I'm sure everyone else could too. But um, this, is, this is a newsletter by uh, Matthias Ott and um, it's called Own Your Web. It's it's still very early days. I think it's only eight or ten. Yeah, I think uh, he's on ten. I think. Yeah, um, and eight or ten, you know, editions. Yeah, that, yeah. that have been published. Um, but he focuses on building a website, building a personal website a lot, and also he highlights uh, a personal site of the week. And I. I cannot be a bigger proponent for having a personal website. Um, it has led to every opportunity in my career. Uh, I have everything that ha that I've ever done is because I have a blog. Um, and so, and many others have said similar things. It's obviously if you are a, a tinkerer with WordPress or if you're a developer of any kind, if you want to try coding, you can obviously do it on your own website because you, you know, you can break it and you can fix it and it's okay. <laughs> uh, and so I like that he is starting to feature um, personal websites because I just think they're they're making a comeback for sure. Um, if anybody's following along with the Fediverse and Activity Pub and the AT Protocol and Threads and all these things that are happening, all these sites are beginning to connect again. It used to be we were all connected through RSS feeds. RSS feeds are definitely still a thing, and I use them every single day personally. I know many others do, and it, it's a it's an underpinning of the web for sure. Every app that you open, whether it's the Apple News app or Flipboard or the Google News app, they're all powered by RSS. So if RSS didn't exist, you know, all those things wouldn't exist either. Um, however, the federation part of it, where personal websites can connect now, someone can make a comment on Mastodon, it shows up on your blog post. Someone can write a blog, uh, a comment on your blog post. It can show up on um, any of the activity pub powered um, platforms that are out there. Whether that's a sh photo sharing thing, there's 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 a Pixel replacement fed. for yeah, Pixel Fed. There's a replacement called Bookworm for for uh, good Goodreads. There's all these different things that are starting to connect the connective tissue of the open web. Um, when when we said before that we were like defending 
the principles of WordPress. By defending the principles of WordPress, you're actually defending the open principles of the open web, of trying to allow there to be no owner of any particular thing and for everything to continue to connect with each other and not be siloed in their own things. And we're seeing that make a humongous resurgence over the last 18 months. Um, even Facebook is joining the Fediverse, which is like ridiculous to no, we never would have thought that that could happen. Um, and so now just, this is a simple newsletter. I just picked one out of the latest things, but, uh, the fact that they're highlighting personal homepages, I think if you, if you have a site that's kind of laying dormant right now, or you haven't updated in a while, consider publishing your content on your site first and then sharing it everywhere else. Yeah. And I think you'll see a lot of benefit from that. If you uh, if you download the ActivityPod plugin for WordPress, which you know officially under the auspices of Automatic, um, you'll it's kind of a really interesting experience. It's not what you're expecting. Your your website becomes a first citizen of the Fediverse. So in effect, your website posts when you post, and now you can cross pollinate comments from different social platforms. Just on that, I've stopped mentioning it recently, but if you fancy joining our Mastodon install, wpbuilds.com. No, not .com, wpbuilds.social. You can sign up over there. It's free. I'm saddling the burden. And, oh, that's nice. Um, yeah, it's, uh, I think we've had it for like, I don't know, two years or something now. And um, it's good. It's nice. It's just a free way to interact. And uh, and But I've been following uh, Matthias Ott for a little while as well, and I love the stuff that I read. We featured a few on this show, actually, a couple of times. Good. So that's really nice. Thank you. And finally... Michelle has raised the WordPress Photo Festival 2024 submissions. What's this one, Michelle? This is a WordPress event that is happening right now. Um, started on Sat well Friday, Saturday, whatever day the third was. The fr Saturday um, runs through the tenth, and anyone anywhere is allowed to register. It's free to register, and then when you submit photos up, you can submit your photos through uh, WordPress.org/photos and tag them with a uh, Hashtag WP Kerala uh, photos, I think is what it is. And when they come in to be moderated, we will add that tag to it. There are actually prizes. I am one of the adjudicators for this event. So we will be awarding prizes for um, for the most photos submitted for um I can't remember, best photo, things like that. So um, Marcus and I, and Topher, if he's feeling better, Topher has been under the weather. Um, we will be uh, announcing those at the closing remarks on the 10th. But right now, there are over 200 photos awaiting moderation. Uh, I always like to remind people that there are only 29 of us moderating photos. And we also all have full time jobs. So <laughs> if you have submitted photos, please, um, patience is, is um, appreciated. But it's this, it's an exciting, um, you know, next gen event for WordPress. It is all online, so anywhere, anybody anywhere in the world can participate. And uh, I can't remember how. Much, oh, you can see 351 approved already at the time that you pulled this up. It might be even higher now. Um, that I did just double check. Yeah, 371. 20, 20 so, more. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So there are people who are in there happily editing or moderating right now. We're not accepting all photos. They are moderated the same as they would be for anything else. So uh, if you are submitting um, less than stellar photos, they probably won't be included. So make sure that you're looking at the quality of your photos as well as abiding by all the rules, no faces, no license plates, things like that. And uh, we will get to all of them by the 10th. And uh, it's just an exciting kind of thing to be a part of and to see something that people can all participate in. Yeah, and you get a badge. Yeah, you get a badge. If you, never, if you have never submitted a photo and you get a photo approved into the WordPress photo directory, you get a badge on your on your WordPress.org profile um, as a photo contributor. So. Nice. Photos.wpkerala.org. K-E-R-A-L-A dot -A org. Yeah. And now that my um, Marcus Burnett has turned down my fabulous offer, <laughs> Hang on, Yorkshire. I'm, can I win the competition? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. Go to uh, photos.wpkerala.org and submit your photos there. I'm going to click refresh because I want to see if it's gone up from 71 to. Oh, I can't see now. I don't know what I did. 
that's it. That's all we got for you this week. We will be back next week um, with another. F- oh, another one has just been added. We're on 372. <laughs> there you go. Uh, that's fabulous. So we'll be back next week. It only remains for me to say super duper big thank you. That was a fabulous discussion this week. I think we've enjoyed that. First of all, thank you for anybody who made a comment. That really helps the show move along. It's brilliant. Secondly, thank you to my co-host, Michelle Frechette. She joins us very, very frequently. Appreciate that very much. But also uh, to uh, Carlin Devroux and also to Mark Benzacane. Have I pronounced that, Mark? You right. got it right. Oh. Very good. Um, I appreciate that as well. We will be back next week. But just before we go, uh, Colleen, I'm sorry, but here comes the slightly humiliating thing. I have this piece of... Th- Look, he's just so into it. Mark, join us. <laughs> Yay, that's it. We're done. I can capture that and we can stick that on the socials and say thank you very much indeed. So we'll be back next week. Thank you so much. We will see you soon on this week. Thanks, Nathan. Thank you.